at the final part of the first day of the Free From Virtual Festival, the Christmas special, uh, Saturday, the 28th of November. My name's Tony Moore, and I've been here with you for most of the afternoon. Uh, Naomi was here with you in the morning. And uh, we come to the final part, which is the Meet the Maker session. And uh, having done this earlier in the year, uh, I, I always find this fascinating to know more about the people behind the products. Um, we have three fantastic companies. We have Nutblend, Sacco Superfoods, and the Green Sisters, or just Green Sisters, actually. Um, the founders of these amazing brands will be joining us live here uh, to share their story, introduce their products, and give you maybe a sneak preview of their plans for the future. You will also get the opportunity to ask them some questions. Now, we've got a, a, a chat room. So if you want to put questions in as we go along, I will be able to ask them on your behalf. And, of course, I will be asking my own questions as uh, I listen to uh, uh, the, the stories and the secrets behind uh, the uh, the brands right here. And we're going to start with Nutblend. Feel good energy. Gabriella, the founder of Nutblend, will introduce you uh, to their range of nutritious nut butters that naturally satisfy without the sugar high. Uh, Gabriella set up Nut Blend in 2015. She wanted to boost her energy without experiencing that sugar high or the subsequent crash that came with it. And what started as a hobby quickly turned into product development. Gabriella fell in love with blending unique delicious nut butters and the instant mood boosting energy that comes from them and we are very thrilled to say she is with us right now gabriella please the stage is yours tell us all about nut blend ah oh, thank you for the introduction tony i feel like you've just summarized it all i can just job done see you later <laughs> oh no <laughs> um but literally yeah as you said i'm yeah i'm excited to introduce anyone who's watching i, I still find this really funny because i'm like i don't even know who i'm talking to but i hope you're all there um, and if you did catch me last time, I've got this beautiful backdrop again because it just helps me point to the different products. And I, yeah, even though I feel a bit like the weather woman. Um, but as I say, as Tony mentioned, I set up Nutblend in 2015 as I was looking for something to satisfy my energy dips. So come afternoon or in the morning, I just wanted something that gave me that nice natural high, but then without crashing, which I experienced a lot with when I consumed sugar or anything that was a bit more, I don't know, like a treat. So if I had a brownie or something, it always gave me that really exciting um, lift, but then ultimately my energy just depleted and went and I couldn't find anything on the market at the time that had no added sugar. So I decided to start making nut butters. It was an experiment purely to improve my own satisfaction, my own diet. And I just fell in love with how great they tasted. So from that, I quickly turned it into product development as I wanted to share this epiphany and feeling with everyone else in the rest of the world. So we came around and we've got four flavors. So as you can see here, I would point as I, as I move, but we've got one with almonds, hazelnut and cinnamon, an indulgent with um, cashews, cacao and cacao nibs. I feel like I turned around them because I thought they were there like on my wall. Um, we've got a coconut macadamia and almond and then our praline and that's with pecans, maca and almond. So nothing else. We have no salt, no type of sugar or sweeteners, not even healthy sugars like dates, coconut sugar, agave. They're all just nuts and a pinch of spice to give you flavors that brighten and boost your day, your mood. And you can do anything with them. So put them in your porridge, you can put them in smoothies, you can put them on toast, in pancakes, you can bake with them, cook with them, they can go savoury if you want a satay. But literally the, the possibilities are endless, to take the phrase. And yeah, I personally love them in porridge, I have them every morning. Um, but they do, they just give you that natural energy boost without having to rely on any sugar high or subsequent crash. And we're actually really excited that this year we got two great taste awards. So our praline, the green one hiding at the back, uh, with pecans and maca, that got a great taste, which we were super thrilled about. And our indulgent also did, but this is where it gets exciting. So we're currently going through a rebrand, which means our labels are changing. The flavors are just being tweaked to make sure that they taste super delicious. And we're just changing everything about the look, the feel, the wording. And so from this, our new indulgent recipe won the great taste. So as soon as we launch in January time, um, you'll be able to get your hands on them. 
Otherwise, you can find us on the marketplace here at the Free From Festival, which I hope you're all enjoying. Otherwise, you can find us on our website, which is nutblend.com. We're on Instagram as well, which is at nutblend and Facebook as well. So whichever tickles your taste buds, whatever mood you're in, chocolatey, rich, nutty, crunchy, smooth, you've got four to choose from. And yeah, if you have any other questions about the flavours, please feel free to get on the chat or messages through our marketplace vendor um page but happy to ask any questions that come come my way well gabriella i mean that was very uh, concise and informative and very clear uh, thank you but I'm, I'm intrigued to know that the, the uh, kind of the genesis of this start so obviously you were looking for something that, that didn't have those sugars in them um and how did you stumble upon the idea for, for the uh, for the nut blend originally? So I think it was purely trial and error. It was at a time, so 2015 was sort of the verge of like bloggers coming into trendy fashion. I remember looking at so many different websites and different brands that were popping up and they were like healthy alternatives. And I was really intrigued by all of the different ingredients they use and different natural sources. So... I think I just impulse bought a processor. Like I genuinely couldn't tell you the reasoning behind <laughs> why I got one. And from that, I started just to try making things like Nutella and different nut butters, but they were just a bit too sweet for me. So when the recipe called for a dozen dates, I just, I could have a spoonful and I was like, I'm, I'm done, it's just too much. And that's how I then decided to scale it back. And I've always loved things like cinnamon. In fact, at uni, my friends were always they, they call me like the cinnamon queen because they could tell that I was home because I cooked with it all the time. And yeah, so I just started to throw things in that naturally lifted the flavours, but without adding any type of sugar. Because yeah, well, we just believe that at the end of the day, if it's white table sugar versus agave, it's all sugar. It's going to give you that spike. So mm. you're still going to get that high, but you're, you're going to crash when it wears off. And we just want people to keep riding that high wave. We just, just keep enjoying the experience of feeling energy. And so, yeah, as soon as I started blending the ingredients and came across the almond, the hazelnut and cinnamon and cacao with vanilla, which was the original combination, I just fell in love. I couldn't believe how great it tasted, but also ultimately I felt so good. And I just, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't get over how this epiphany kind of happened of right. just being able to eat it and think I'm not going to crash and it tastes so good. <laughs> Well, I, I have this this mental image of, of you like a mad food scientist mm. with with jars of, of all kinds of different ingredients open all around you and your food presser, uh, processor in front of you and you're throwing things in and putting the spoon in and then throwing stuff away and putting something else in and trying to find that magic formula and then go, Eureka, that's the taste. The thing is that it's actually true. And still to this day, oh, actually, I'm not ashamed to say, but I am so obsessed with nut butters still that I, I just love experimenting and I love eating them but literally that is me I, I feel like I am a bit of a nutter just chucking everything in experimenting and then I just get so excited when I realize how great it tastes and I just sit there eating with a spoon being my best customer still. <laughs> and uh, how, how did you uh, manage the transition between um, beautifully passionately mad and nut uh, butter person um, at home in the kitchen and product producer for the wider world because that's a jump isn't it right yeah. it's, it's, it's easy enough to make it for yourself and your friends and make a few jars of it but to turn it into a commercial proposition is another step yeah and I think well actually like on reflection because we've just celebrated our five years so five years ago on the 26th of November which was Thursday was the big launch day at the BBC Good Food show in Birmingham and I was just sort of reflecting on that time and I think I was just so excited about the products and because of the complementary flavors and really if there kind of was that science behind figuring out the quantities to make sure it tasted like optimum good. So I was just so thrilled and optimistic that everyone else was going to love the flavor as well as experience that feel good high that I just, I kind of hold on to the naivety of me where I just ran with it. Like I didn't even think, so it wasn't even a, oh, should I set up a business? I was like, other people need to try this, boom, let's go. And I think in that sense, maybe I'm a bit efficient in just going, but I just kind of set up the next steps, bought a huge processor. So that was the <laughs> next step. And it's, I've still got it actually, it's massive. And thought, 
all I need to do is make this, but rather than in a small jar, make it so it fits 20 jars. So step by step, I just started to think at the end of the day, I need an end product with a label, the ingredients, lids, things like that, and methodically worked through until I was then in my kitchen, kitchen hat on, working my way through, blitzing all the nuts together, adding the cinnamon, adding the ingredients to get this finished product, which is what I envisioned, and then taking it to the BBC Good Food show, where from then I just never looked back. We just kept selling. That's fantastic, Gabrielle. Well, listen, um, congratulations. Five years of doing something uh, tasteful and tasty um, and, and contributing enormously uh, to the opportunity for people to be able to get great food, but with almost no additives and without that, the, the challenge of, of having to deal with sugar. Um, what plans do you have for the future? Uh, apart from the January, the first launch, you've got a rebrand as well. Do you have some new products coming in? Uh, uh, I know you've kind of rejigged the existing ones. Is there anything you can give us a clue about what might be coming next? So I was gonna say, well, we're so thrilled about the new rebrand. That's our biggest, that's like our main challenge at the moment, getting that all set for end of Jan, Feb time. Um, so people can also join our newsletter if they want to get a sneak peek of what's coming. And then next year we are going to bring out new product flavors. So that's exciting. In fact, working on that at the moment, just to try and finalize the ingredients and make sure it tastes good, but that will be coming. Yeah. Next, hopefully by this time next year. Fantastic. Well, listen, um, everything's available in the marketplace. Um, and, uh, I think you, you gave your links a little bit earlier, but just, um, Tell everybody one more time where they can find you. So you can find us on the marketplace, as Tony mentioned, or on our website, which is nutblend.com. And there's loads more information there. So about founding it in 2015, but also recipes. You can find some inspiration. And through that as well, it links to our Instagram, which is at nutblend. And the same with Facebook. So that's facebook.com forward slash nutblend. So find us there. Email us, get in touch if you have any questions or queries. Um, yeah to help fantastic thank you so that's gabriella from nut blend and uh telling us all about her delicious products and the exciting things to look out for in the new branding and flavors that will be coming in the next 12 months now we're going to meet our next maker and lucia is the founder of sacco superfoods and she's going to be telling us about and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly. She will tell me, I'm sure, in a minute. But Baob, B-A-O-B-A-B, Baob. Uh, and uh, many, many may have heard about the, the, uh, the Baob tree at some point, maybe by reading The Little Prince in School, or maybe from a friend who visited from an African country and saw the majestic tree. However, not many know about the Baob fruit. So in this uh, presentation, uh, Lucia is going to describe the health benefits and how it can be incorporated into your diet and tell us more about it. So welcome, Lucia Sacco Superfoods. Tell us all about it. Well, uh, thank you, Tony, uh, for having me. And uh, yeah, lovely presentation. I appreciate that. Uh, yes, so just as you mentioned before, uh, the Belba fruit uh, is not that, uh, it's only now that people are getting to know it, that many people are familiar with the tree, but not necessarily with the fruit. So I just wanted to take this opportunity just to show you what the fruit looks like. Uh, I was just going to switch my camera so that you can uh, actually see see it here oh there it is oh wow so basically this uh, is uh, the actual fruit as you can see it's quite sturdy it's very difficult to crack uh, i literally had to use uh, a hammer in order to crack it open uh, it's quite furry as well so basically when uh, uh, it's uh, harvested is a uh, full of furry and then the people need to be careful because uh, it can it can get you quite itchy uh, so once we take off the furry, we crack it open and then inside it looks like this. So you will see these little fibers and you will see the pulp of the fruit. So these little white chunks, they dry naturally inside the shell. So when we crack it open, all we need to do is to actually take them out and ground them into this powder here. Now, the powder has a very nice uh, citrusy flavor, and that is because uh, it's uh, highly concentrated in vitamin C. Uh, 
so it's commonly it's called six time of vitamin C than an orange. And then the other properties are calcium, is very rich in calcium, very rich in potassium as well, and very rich in probiotic as well. So people normally use it to clean the liver, to boost their immune system, and also to uh, lower the blood sugar level as well. And then uh, all you need to do is uh, just to take uh, half a teaspoon or one teaspoon and blend it in anything you like. So what we normally do, for example, in the morning, we simply take uh, one teaspoon, we put it in a cup, we add a little bit of uh, hot water. You can actually do it with cold water if you prefer. We simply blend it a little bit to create uh, some sort of a paste because if you fill it, uh, we, we, you fill it up straight away, uh, you, it doesn't dissolve as properly. And then you add more water just to have your drink. Now the drink can be, you can have it uh, uh, plain as it is, or you can add a little bit of uh, lemon if you like. You can sweeten it with a little bit of honey or your favorite sweetener if you prefer. Uh, there are different type of recipes as well uh, uh, for you to make your hot drinks, but this is one of them. Another alternative, uh, I'm not going to make the full porridge, but then this is just uh, for you to, sh just to show you uh, one of the um, way you can use the baobab is uh, simply to use it with porridge. So again, uh, you prepare your porridge as per usual. So if you use the microwave or if you make it in a pot, that's absolutely fine. You can use your favorite milk and then you need to make sure that the baobab powder uh, again, one teaspoon per serving is uh, added at the end when uh, you have already finished cooking your porridge. That's simply because uh, it will help you to keep all the properties uh, of the baobab instead of heating it up and, uh, you know, eliminate, uh, end up eliminating all the minerals and the vitamins of the baobab powder. Apart from that, you can also uh, actually uh, I have an empty blender over here, <laughs> but then it's just a, a, a quick demonstration just to show you how you can um, add again the baobab powder in your in your smoothies. Okay, so you add your favorite fruits and you simply blend one teaspoon again in the smoothies. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to uh, show you uh, in uh, in a almost in, visually uh, how to use the baobab is because uh, many people, uh, when uh, they see the pouches in the shop, they get a little bit intimidated. They see the health benefits and they are attracted because of the health benefits. They can uh, test the powder and they see that the powder tastes nice, but then they are not always sure how they can incorporate it into the, uh, into the diet. Uh, and then uh, this is just a very quick demonstration on how easy it can be to add baobab to your, uh, to your recipes. Uh, and then of course you can go very crazy and very creative with it. You can add it into your pancake mixer, you can add it into your cooking and baking. We sometimes also sprinkle it into our chips as well, believe it or not, uh, simply because uh, it, it's got this uh, nice, uh, again, a citrusy flavor that blends quite nicely when you uh, make a rub with uh, uh, chili flakes and, uh, and salt as well. So yes, you can be very creative with it as well. And what we are trying to do is that uh, we uh, publish on a regular basis some recipe ideas on our website, again, just to give you some uh, inspiration on how this uh, amazing fruit can be used. That was absolutely amazing, Lucia. I, I really didn't know this fruit at all and it <clears throat> it looks like very hard work to actually get to the uh, the inside of that fruit um uh it's, it's a it's a lot of effort to create something very special um is is this something that uh you can scale up to uh, to uh, to lots of different um uh, flavors and things or is it always basically the same flavor Oh, yeah. Well, uh, actually, the baobab, uh, you'd be amazed. Uh, people do all lots of things, uh, not just because of the favor and the health benefits, but also because of this um, uh, um, emulsifying effect. So people use it, for example, to make desserts because of this. Uh, I hope that 
English word is correct. So basically, <laughs> it helps uh, uh, make your sources a little bit more dense, if it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so, and then it is very much used in ice cream as well. So, ice cream maker, they actually use a baobab uh, uh, for his uh, <laughs> chemical properties, basically. <laughs> Fantastic. So now, obviously, it's uh, available in the marketplace here as well. But um, you were saying that uh, you you uh, have recipe ideas that you let people know about. How do people find out more about you? Yes, of course. So uh, apart from the marketplace, uh, uh, the free from uh, marketplace, you can also find us uh, online uh, on our website, uh, sacosuperfoods.com. Uh, you will be able to find not only uh, our Sacco Baobab powder, but also our different range of products. Uh, on top of that, you can also uh, find us in our uh, brick and mortar. In fact, this is where uh, I am uh, right now. And uh, Again, if you allow me, I will give you just a very quick tour of the different things uh, that we have here in the shop. Would that be okay, Tony? Uh, absolutely. We'd love to see what's in the shop. Show us. <laughs> Thank you. If I manage to take off my, <laughs> my tripod. So, yes. So, basically, this will be the shop. Um, and over here, you have uh, the uh, Sacco products range. So you can see the baobab here, uh, the different sizes, uh, the ginger flakes, uh, which uh, uh, we are very proud of our ginger flakes. Uh, we just recently won the three star greatest 2020 award as well because of that. And then it is delicious. Uh, we also have some moringa powder over here the cocoa has tea, the hibiscus flower, and the organic dried mango. On top of that, what we are doing, not only in this space, but also online on our website, is that to partner with other businesses who have the same ethos, which is uh, as us, which is that of working directly with small scale producers in um, uh, African countries. So by doing so, they uplift the livelihood and then on top of that, they also know exactly where their products come from. So we also have a collection of skincare products made with shea butter, healthy drinks from Calix, uh, some lovely seeds and nuts as well uh, from Dolce La Dolce and uh, beautiful baobab jams from Chosen as well. And uh, we are also working very hard to get some gifts set together for Christmas uh, or any occasions. Uh, you can find some of them uh, um, in uh, on the uh, marketplace uh, as well. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. So, Lucia uh, from Sacco Foods, you have now educated, inspired, and actually uh, given give me some ideas here. Um, it seems like a um, an amazing. Um, fruit and the, uh, the the powder can pretty much go in in any other food product, can't it? Absolutely, absolutely. As I mentioned before, you can actually uh, be very creative with it and add it in anything, savory or uh, or, or not. Um, you can sprinkle it into your fruit salad if you want. It's very very versatile, indeed. Okay. All right. Well, listen, well, good luck with everything. Uh, if you want to know more about Sacco Superfoods and the Baobob um, powders, you can find them in the marketplace or you can find them at saccosuperfoods.com. Now we are going over to our final Meet the Makers. And these are, are two makers that I've met quite a number of times over the last few years in the real world uh, at the Free From festivals around the country that uh, they've taken part in. And I've been organizing uh, and it's great to see them again here now uh, who are going to talk to us uh, these of course the green sisters this is rena and gita they are founders of, of green sisters and um th well, they're going to be talking about the perfect easy christmas bake um if you fancy the perfect serve india indian metse christmas can be made perfectly simple and whilst they are sharing those wonderful hacks to accompany your delish, delicious break bakes sorry uh, they will keep you inspired for important moments eating and sharing so let's find out more about what they've got lined up for us uh rena and gita over to you hi tony 
Hi everyone, hi Tony. Um, I'm Gita, this is Rena, and we're the Green Sisters. Um, we may have met many of you, those of you who aren't aware of our brand, um, we've been spending a lot of time trying to remove all the 14 allergens that the Food Standards Agency regulates so that we can try and make sure we can eat inclusively again. Today what we've got in store for you is, um, I'll just show you the ingredients. We have, uh, those of you who were on uh, Naomi's talk earlier, we'll, we've got a similar challenge. You either get to see our heads or our um, bodies um, and we're trying to show you sort of our ingredients as well and um, we'll be cooking up for you um, a few dishes um, and really it's about making the most of Christmas because I think we all like to snack and share um, around Christmas time so what we're trying to show you is what you can do with your Christmas this leftovers that's really nice easy um, it means that you're making the most of your meals um, and then also what we can do um, just to accompany those um, products that maybe you might choose to purchase um, either samosas from us or from uh, Indian food from the supermarket um, and how you can maybe make a real meal out of that that you can share together um, so everything we show you today will be um, free from all of the 14 allergens and the food standards agency regulates so that you can all um, find something that suitable for any of your guests that you may have at home. Rena, would you like to introduce your dish? Uh, yeah, so Gita is going to um, obviously make her side of things and on, on the other side I'll be kind of creating um, some accompaniments. So for example, to go with things like a curry or if you have, um, you know, leftover potatoes from Christmas dinner and you want to make something the next day, we'll be showing you how to make um, something called an aludiki jar, which is where you have a nice kind of potato patty um, sat on a bed of some lovely um, some lovely chickpea curry which um, as Geet mentioned you can purchase from us or you, you can also make that at home yourself but essentially it's all helping you to make Christmas very easy um, leveraging those leftovers um, the, the roast potatoes that you might have uh, left behind and I guess ultimately eating inclusively as a family which which we know personally we've struggled with um i, I know i have with geese being a celiac and, and me following the plant-based diet it's it's um it can be quite challenging at times and ultimately we want to show you can have great flavor food um and it, it doesn't have to be hard even even during christmas so um yeah there so we go so um, it's it's quite a unique thing for Rena and I to both be able to be in the kitchen together. So if we start um, having this sisterly dynamic, um, please enjoy. Uh, I know <laughs> those of you who've seen us before when we're together, um, you will start to notice how, um, you know, it can, well, we might end up doing what the other person was supposed to be doing. So that might be a bit fun for you. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. So um, what I'm going to start doing, yeah, let's start right away. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to quickly start making the, um, the tiki. So sorry, you're not going to see my face so much now. I'm going to join, I'm going to show you the ingredients that we've got. Um, and then um, during the intro, uh, sorry, during sort of the middle of this, Rena can introduce you to some of the products and, and what she's doing with her chickpeas, um, which will help to kind of make the most out of this dish. So um, without further ado, we have, so this is what we would recommend you do with your potatoes. So um, if you have roast potatoes, um, even if your potatoes have actually been um, coated with something, maybe you've, you've over Christmas decided that you wanted to, um, you know, have mustard glaze, although mustard is an allergen so I'm sure those of you who are allergic to mustard wouldn't do that but you know glazed um, potatoes um, anything like that this is a really great dish that you can um, quite simply make um, using those ingredients so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my fingers in um, and I'm also just going to show you what I've already got in my bowl now in true Christmas spirit this isn't very um, this isn't something we would do as an Indian speciality but I've put sage in there because we're really getting into the run up to Christmas now normally you could put something like coriander as um as uh, an, a herb or that you can use um, to, as part of this dish and it just adds that little bit of extra flavor those of you who are low fodmap might not want to choose to put a bit of garlic in there but i'm going to add um just half a clove of garlic which i've chopped already and then a couple of um, heat um, spoons um, of the potato which has just been mashed to a consistency that is easy for you to be able to um, 
to be able to work within your hands because we are going to put our hands into this now. Um, Christine, um, I do normally wear gloves for this part, but I haven't actually got any with me here because I'm actually working from uh, a kitchen I wouldn't normally, so I'm also having some work done in my kitchen. So, um, right, so to this, so you can just see I've got a couple of spoonfuls of potato. Um, all you do is add a few, uh, a few more spoons of potato if you wanted. Now, we're really big on, on um, nourishing ingredients, so I'm going to also add to that some seeds. Um, if you've got cumin at home, in our spice cupboard, um, there always is um, cumin and some of those um, herbs that, that Christine Bailey was talking about earlier, like turmeric, which is really great for its anti-inflammatory properties. Um, and we've also got things like coriander, which have a slight sweetness to them. Um, I'm going to add, um, before I add the seeds, they'll be my final ingredient. Um, a, a bit of black pepper because it actually is quite useful in terms of bringing out um, the properties of the curcumin, which is the um, in the turmeric. Uh, it's actually what lends itself to that anti-inflammatory effect. Um, and I'm just going to get a little spoon. Ah, let me go here. Um, you don't need too much. Um, your fingers will go yellow with this, so I would recommend gloves. And I'm just literally going to put about a quarter of a teaspoon into that mixture. Um, I'm also um, guilty of loving a bit of spice. Now, um, when I say spice, I mean chili spice. Um, in the Indian culture, there's two types of spice. You'd either talk spice as in spices, or you'd also say spice as in spice levels. So you, if anybody ever asks you, would you like some spice? Make sure you clarify which one you're talking about when you're Indian. I've literally just gonna put a quarter of a spoon of that in there. And then a really important binding um, agent for this particular um, uh, speciality is actually some rice flour, because what it's going to do is to help any of the, those ingredients that are a little bit wet. So if you had in your potatoes, something that was maybe a little bit wet, you might want to use this rice flour to help to soak up that wetness. Um, so we're gonna put just a couple of sprinkles. So you, you, I didn't use very much there, you can see. Um, and just to kind of show you the bowl there, you've got a few ingredients in there. Don't worry if you have things like vegetables in there, that goes really nicely. If you've had um, something at, at like a, um, a protein or a protein alternatives like soy, um, you can add that too. I like to usually put um, sweet potato. It's very wet sweet potato. So you really need a lot more rice flour in there and uh, maybe double the amount. So I've just done a sprinkle, but I put um, much more full sweet potato. And the beauty of using sweet potato with this particular um, dish is that it's um, known as being an actual vegetable. So you're actually helping yourself to get one of your five a day uh, by including um, vegetables like sweet potato and also butternut. Now I'm just um, squishing those together and I've got Rena in the corner here waving coriander at me because we are <laughs> coriander fans. <laughs> um, and so I'm just going to ask her to tear away a few leaves. Um, but flavour is really key to most Indian dishes. Um, all I'm doing at the moment, sorry, just to show you, is just massaging those ingredients together. Now, that's just going to give it a little bit of a bind before we bake them. Traditionally, um, with these aloo tikkis, which is what I'm making, um, people will normally um, fry them on a shallow fry. Now, obviously we've been trying to show you how to make sure that the food is healthy and inclusive. So to minimize the amount of oil um, you're using, it's better just to make a patty. Um, again, like I said, any, any leftover um, food, whether that's the parsnips, um, I would add to this. Absolutely beautiful if you want a sweeter type of um, tikki, it's, it's really going to complement this. Um, and then Rena there is just, um, helping me by adding a um, about how much would you say, Rena, of coriander um, you've gone? She's gone wild with the coriander. I do like, like my you know. coriander. I've heard off a few. Um, it smells beautiful. Quite a few leaves in there. There yeah. you go. Wonderful coriander there. So it smells beautiful. But what I'm going to do is just literally show you that now you've got a really lovely, uh, it's almost like, a, it feels like a dough, but it's not a dough, obviously it's potato. Um, and then the final thing that I said I was going to add was a sprinkling of jeera, which is cumin. Um, so jeera is the um, Indian terminology used for that. Um, a sprinkling of 
um, of these spices that I mentioned. So I've got coriander powder as well because it does offer that lovely authentic flavor. And then um, just very shortly at the end, I'm going to um, add some of those seeds. Now we use seeds because um, it, they're a great alternative to nuts. Um, so I just want to show you that has now turned into a nice ball of potato and it's great served with some of the products that we actually manufacture. So those of you who know our brand already, we used to uh, make these, but they don't travel very well. So we thought we'd show you how to make them for yourself, these patties, um, because we obviously deliver UK nationwide, a range of samosas. Um, this Christmas, we've gone really excited and we, we've got some specialities. We've done a Christmas dinner samosa, which has got everything you can think of um, from a absolutely delicious sprout. Those of you who are sprout fans, I know we have a bit of a fun with our um, with our sort of family because some people love sprouts and those that don't definitely get them given to them for Christmas. So um, we've done a sprout samosa um, and truly is one of those that people won't really recognize because one of the spices to the, um, to the samosa, you've got carrots in there, everything you'd want from a Christmas meal in the samosa. So if you're looking for something a bit different this Christmas, I would highly recommend you do that. So I've managed to make three lovely patties with this. Obviously, it depends on how many ingredients you have left. So if you've got parsnips, carrots, you can pop, chuck them in there as well. I'm going to pop them in the oven now. And then I'm going to move you over to Rena, who's going to um, describe to you how to actually make a real mezze out of this. And then we'll, towards the end, bring the whole dish together. So Rena, do you want to yeah, work on I this might, space here? Um, yeah. I might actually lift this up a little bit so you can kind of see this side of the, the joys of working virtually. <laughs> um, okay, perfect. So um, I'll just talk to you for a moment about what I'm going to show you. Um, so yeah, hi everyone again. Um, so as Gita said, she's going to pop her um, Olu Diggi patties into the um, oven so that they can bake. Um, and what I'll actually be showing you is how you can take those patties and make them into a nice uh, traditional Indian street food dish. Sorry about the noise in the background there, Gita's just um, basically oh, she's rinsing, rinsing her hands. hands. So yeah, apologies if you can't hear me as clearly, but yeah, I was just saying so, I'll show you how to actually make the accompaniments and how you can make it into a nice little um, meal. Um, so one of the things I did very kind of Blue Peter style already earlier was um, I made this chickpea curry. It's still quite warm. And um, for those of you who've been to our festivals and uh, our demos in, at the festivals in the past, you've probably seen us um, cook the chickpea curry quite a few times. Um, we've also cooked um, alternative curries like the red lentil curry, which, which I would say that you could use as the base but essentially um, we will have um, the recipe available for this but this will act as the base on which the um, the potato patty will, will kind of sit so um, in here I essentially kind of cooked a, a base of onion with some um, green chili some black pepper um, and some uh, masalas and Indian spices and then um, cooked those off in a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of rapeseed oil but if, if you don't want to use oil you can use water in there um, and then kind of cook the onions through so that they're nice and soft and golden um, and then add the chickpeas into there so as I said we will have that um, available to you so you can um, cook that but that's essentially going to be the base um, and then what I'm also now going to quickly show you, and I am going to tilt the camera down so you can see um, what I'm doing as well, similar to how Geese did, is I've got here um, some um, free from yogurt. So um, this is some free from yogurt that we've got there. And I'm going to show you how to make a retha, which is a really lovely kind of yogurt topping that would go on to the top of the um, potato patty. So I've got already my yogurt there. And to that, I'm going to add firstly some of my red onions. So I've got those here. So um, add a, a, a few sprinkles of that. Again, I, I chopped this already beforehand um, so that it was already kind of prepared. And you don't need too much, I guess, depending on how many people you're cooking for, um, you can, or how much 
of this um, kind of garnish that you'd like, you can vary accordingly. So I'm just going to mix some of that through. Um, to that, I'll add a little bit of uh, black pepper, which I'm not sure where Gita might have put that. Oh, there we go. Got it there. A sprinkling of black pepper in there as well. So add a little bit of that. Um, I'll also add a little bit of red chilli powder in there, like that, and a pinch, a very little pinch of salt. We try to kind of limit the salt in our um, dishes, so I'll just add a little um, pinch just for some seasoning. Um, and then I'll mix that through so you can, not sure how well you can kind of see, but it's starting to look quite nice in terms of the colours. I'll give it a quick mix. Um, so at the moment we've got some red onion in there. I'm now going to add some grated carrots as well, which I did earlier. Very, again, very Blue Peter style. Um, but this is my actual favourite. Like this, you, you can use this for anything. I mean, it doesn't have to just be with the potatoes that Gita and I are making. You can have this as a, as a dip for anything really. And it's it's really great because it's very versatile. You can you can top top it on, I guess, any kind of dish. What so What do you normally have your red? So we call this a red in in uh, in India. Um, but like I said, you can have it with lots of different dishes. What what do you have it with, Gita? And you have it with things as well, don't you? That aren't just kind of um, Indian dishes. You also have it with. My favourite is the one we're showing you. Actually, um, I really like to eat Ratha with um, a. Uh, perfectly served samosa, a tikki, which we're, which we're showing you how to make, and um, the pomegranate seeds, because uh, those of you who try it, we'd love to see, you know, your, your go at it, but I think it's absolutely, um, it's absolutely um, uh, really kind of one of those things that it's got everything combined and all those flavours pop in your mouth at a different time, so uh, that's my favourite. Other than that, uh, a nice curry with rice, any kind of um Indian um takeout if you if you're going to have you know that replicated at home and you make that at home I think right those are lovely uh, accompaniment to every dish and I think it's served all the time really at celebrations so most of the dishes that we uh produce are those that are quite common to when you're having any gathering any social sort of occasion whether that's with family or friends in our culture so um all of them are things that if you maybe became diagnosed with, with um, an allergy or an intolerance, you might find that it's, um, you know, it's been a challenge to maybe recreate. Um, hopefully these, are, these little hacks are gonna show you how to do it very quickly um, and easily um, because gluten-free and, and allergen-free doesn't have to be difficult. Um, and it can be a product that, that really satisfies everybody's diet. So um, yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of different um, ways you can serve some of these. Cool, so um, thanks Gita, and yeah, I do, I, I thought you might um, say something like that as well, because it, it really is the best way to have it is with the, the tikki and the samosa, I do love to have quite a lot of it with that. So um, while Gita was just speaking, I was also just grating some of the um, cucumber, which you could probably see, but honestly, you can you can grate any leftovers that you have in your fridge. Um, I mean, I'm putting cucumber in here and um, some carrots, but like you could even put a cabbage, some cabbage in there. Um, I guess whatever you've got left over from Christmas or, or any time. And it's a really nice spiced dish, but at the same time, because it's yogurt, it's quite cooling. So if you're finding that you've got a nice kick from the curry, the, the flavors really complement one another. Um, I just think it's a really gorgeous tasting yogurt. Um, I can eat heaps of it with, with rice or any dish really. So um, so yeah, there you go. Hopefully you can, you can see kind of the, the colours there um, and yeah I guess that's that's part of the, the, the dish done and then the other side of things would be a mint um, yoghurt as well so I've made a mint dip as well which you can see here um, again you can either use this from I know in some of the shops you can you can purchase this from or you can also make it at home um, yourself with some fresh mint leaves. Um, again, a bit of the free from yogurt that we've used um, and adding a few other ingredients, but we can, we can share that with you too. So I guess that's the side parts mainly done. Um, 
Yeah, so I think um, just to talk you through a bit about the business whilst we're waiting for those things to cook. Um, hello again, everybody, you can see us now. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know if any questions have come in or anything like that. I haven't really been um, paying any attention to the chat, but um, just very quickly, um, we are transitioning um, slightly um, as Green Sisters because it's been a bit of a change for us um, having moved from seeing you guys face to face and missing you guys seeing you face to face um, to now managing, um, you know, changing the business to the internet. And some of you may have experienced some challenges um, in that because it hasn't been um, the easiest, I think, um, operating with a frozen chilled product um, up and down the country. But um, you'll be pleased to know that we've migrated over um, to some new packaging and we're just looking to exhaust the old packaging so that the products that we um, send you are, um, you know, arrive in ship shape condition. So um, yeah, hopefully that's something um, you can forgive us for because it was a real new um, challenge sort of in the heat of summer sending um, so many deliveries up and down the country. Um, but the kind of things that I think you guys know us for are these lovely bad boys, our bargees, um, which mm -hmm. again, um, one day we'd love to show you how to make those, but um, at the moment we really wanted to take the opportunity to cook really something nice in the kitchen for you. Um, you can see how simple that was. It took me probably about five minutes to throw together my tickies. They're just cooking away. The one step you missed was I just um, dipped um, them in the nuts. So you, um, once they come out, sorry, not in the nuts and the pumpkin seeds and, and the sunflower seeds mix. Um, so you'll see those, but you know, it's very, very simple food that we try and create and we do the hard stuff ourselves. So anybody who's tried making samosas um, allergen free, that, that's not so simple, um, but don't worry because we produce those for you. And for Christmas, as I say, we've, um, I've got a couple in the oven. We've done some winter leek and vegetables, some sprout samosas, which are the Christmas dinner samosas. And then there's a really nice treat, which, um, we have a new member to our family actually, and she's sat in our kitchen at the moment, um, being our little helper on the other side, uh, and that's my sister-in-law. And um, she's got an amazing sweet tooth <laughs> and has converted us all to eating lots of wonderful <laughs> treats. So courtesy of her, we have produced um, a range of chocolates and variants. So, so you know we obviously have the great taste award-winning um, organic chocolate samosa, which we're really proud of because we don't add um, any refined, um, sorry, any sugar that's refined to it. But what we do is celebrate the chocolate itself. Um, so it's really indulgent velvety chocolate. And we've combined that now with um, salted caramel. We have a white and white chocolate and raspberry flavor. Um, and then we also have some berries and milk chocolate. And um, we will be celebrating our Christmas with gifting this selection <laughs> to, uh, which is taking a bow now in the background, <laughs> to her sister-in-law. So it's an open to her so this Christmas chocolate selection if you ever have it um yeah it's that's who you want to thank for this selection really um it's or available whether, if we're looking a little bit plump on the other side of, um, <laughs> of the other side of Christmas you'll know who to, <laughs> who's to blame for that um, but if you do love salted caramel which I have to say is not something I naturally would gravitate towards but um I have to say it's one thing that I'm really proud of the flavor of um when it's combined in a in a plant-based alternative. So um, those of you who want to try it, I mean, um, feel, feel free to, to go over to the marketplace and try it. But I was terribly surprised because I find as being a gluten-free person, we often get products that are overly sweet. And I therefore have naturally gravitated towards a savory palette. Um, but having tried um, with the coconut milk, this wonderful salted caramel that we've produced, um, I think that that's um, not overly sweet, but it's just as much sweetness as you possibly need for a great dish. So um, yeah, it's just some stuff to look out for. I'm gonna go nip to the oven um, and see how these tickies are going. And then we can plate up everything we've made so you can see how you can celebrate those ingredients. Um, and Tony, if there's anything you want to ask Greener, then now's the time. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you um, a quick, um, a quick, um, update on on what's happening with the food so yeah so i guess we'll show you in, in a moment um once the uh on ludikis, which is what we actually call them the potato patties and um, once they've come out we'll put them on top of the bed of um, chickpea curry and then we'll 
we'll pop the um, patty on top and then we'll add some garnishings, including the red that we showed you and the mint, um, mint yogurt chutney as well. Um, and it will taste uh, really, really delicious. Um, sadly, you wouldn't be able to try it virtually today, but we do always kind of hand out samples of this usually um, when we're doing the live cooking demos. So um, sorry about that, but hopefully they'll, you'll be able to taste them with your eyes <laughs> when, they're, uh, when they're made. Tony, anyway. she didn't give you a chance to speak. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> this is but what, what we... <laughs> but while she stopped, when she stopped speaking, I'll just quickly show you. I just wanted to show you how they look. So um, really, we, we've kept in the smoothies for probably a little bit, a little bit too long because we wanted to put these in at the same time. But um, I think that that's good enough to plate up. They don't take very long, five minutes. If you, you know, you can add in even like sort of your turkey, if, you, if you're having, you know, chicken or any of that into that. And, and you know, it didn't take very long at all just to pimp that out a little bit. Yeah. Rena. Um, Sorry, if, Tony, I wasn't letting you get a word in. Rena, do you want to pop those on there? So <laughs> yeah. These on here. Or do you want to do it the other way Sorry, around? Say that again. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'll do it. Um, don't worry. I'll do that. You carry on. Yeah. So I guess that's. Um, we'll, we'll show you that in a second. But I didn't know Tony if there were any questions or anything um, that were coming in. Well, no. I, uh, first of all, I just like to say that every time I uh, meet and experience one of your demonstrations, I just feel the passion for creativity that you both have, and now th three of you have. Um, you're you are you're you're like on a mission to share great food with the world but do it in a way that's just so healthy and so delicious and um you know i don't need to ask you any questions right you are forthcoming with everything we we could all want to know um and i was going to ask a little bit about but you know how to to deal with the, the products you're doing um supplying in this day and age but you already covered that as well with the new packaging so i'm just looking forward to these these uh, christmas uh, nibbles and bites and sh and foods to share because i think it's genius oh thank you tony but too kind or too kind <laughs> but no we i guess yeah i'm really happy that you said that you, you know you noticed the passion because truly we really are passionate about it i guess you know a lot of you on the call um probably already have heard us say this a few times but as a family you know very early on um 10 15 years ago we, re we really did struggle um you know it's it's not just one of those things where um you know we've we've seen something and we thought oh that would be kind of cool to try i mean as much as it is that as well at the moment you know we really have faced these challenges with with food and and we know how it feels firsthand to you know for, for Gita to miss out on food and and you as the the sibling or the parent or or somebody else you know that's a friend to feel like you're not able to give that person something that they can really enjoy indulging and eat with you I guess from 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 the other side of things from the reverse as somebody who's a family member or a friend you do really feel guilty um and obviously that on top of already Gita already feeling left out um and yeah, there's, there's just so many people out there that that could do with knowing how to easily um, be able to just serve lovely food for their friends and family, especially with things like Christmas leftovers, which are super easy to do. So um, oh yeah, I ho hopefully the like you said, the passions come through, and um, I, I hope we're we're able to kind of help people to now know what to do with a few of their roast potatoes that might um, <laughs> might be left in the, in the tray the next day. Um, and, and yeah, but right, I'll, I'll stop talking now. But yeah, really glad, glad to hear that. Um, and I think Gita's patties are done and they smell lovely. And to be honest, I could eat them without adding any of the <laughs> curries and <laughs> yogurts and whatnot on top. Um, Gia, I'll let, you, I'll let you jump in and, and sure. take over. So I'm just going to quickly show you um, what we've done here, which is, um, sh you know, I've just placed a few of the items that will be, yeah, that will then um, will be um, showing or, you know, that we've showed you how to make. And then a couple of the samosas, but I'm going to cut open one of our Christmas ones because I also have a bowl not far away from there with a bunch of samosas, the ones that we made earlier. So, um, We've also got two plates ready, my Christmassy one showing you how to make sure your season sparkles and uh, one ready for me to pop up to plate this. So just quickly show you that on display. Um, so um, first of all, I just wanted to show you me um, cutting up a, a couple of the more Christmassy variants. So this is our winter leek and vegetable samosa. Um, so just, uh, I'm just going to 
slices and leek is one of those vegetables um, that I think is just so hearty at Christmas that I think it's just lovely to kind of have um, something that just you know celebrates um, some of those winter warming flavors the carrots the sweet corn and the leek in there so it's like really really nourishing and again we bake our samosas we haven't fried them there is a variety that we've created because we seem to find a number of individuals do prefer to fry their products as well and um, I think in frying um, whilst we don't advocate it we do know that some people have the preference so there is a, a particular pastry if you are in the new year interested in actually frying your products because I know authentically that that is you know the preferred way to do it we can show you that this is um the other samosa which actually to be honest I just grabbed some samosas out of the oven so out of the freezer because we do eat them regularly ourselves and I have no idea what I'm about to find this um, is the surprise home stock that we keep in our home freezer so, uh, <laughs> so it's like samosa roulette <laughs> um, <at the> <laughs> it's actually the low fodlicious one so um just those of you who are following a low fodmap diet so that's no garlic no onions we do have two variants of samosa for that the green bean um and um pepper and then obviously this one here which is carrot and sweet corn so you can actually um use this dish um to, to actually celebrate those as well so if you're following a low fodmap diet um this one's for you um on this side so we'll enjoy that for you today now um how do i uh, how would i put this dish together what i simply would do is as i've just done there this is called um a potato um sorry a samosa dicky chart if you've ever had that on a menu um then this is exactly what you'd be having. They would be dicing up the samosa as we have sort of there. They'd probably cut it up a bit more than that. Um, they usually don't um, always put a diggy in, but it's usually a side. So I'm going to celebrate it by putting it on the side there. You can see that quite nicely. And then another side is going to be our lovely bhajis because we've learnt from you lovely guys that we can't go out without a bhaji. <laughs> so um, samosas and bhajis clearly go well together. And so to not disappoint, we thought it'd be wrong not to add them, although we haven't showed you how to make those. And if you ever do want us to, to show you how to make those at home, just let us know. Um, so that's those plated up. Rena's going to now adorn them with her wonderful um other ingredients that she's made earlier if you want to take them up on there and then you can do it in there as well yeah, yeah. i'll do it on here okay so rena just wants me to show you what she's okay. doing so hi everyone we've got the tray here so essentially i'm going to add the chickpea curries that we made earlier to the tray um and so this dish is actually a traditional Indian street food dish. We have them in a few different ways. So the chaat is basically, so, so you have the, the potato patty, which is called the dikki, and then you have obviously the samosa. So that's why it's called on the dikki, but there's also a samosa chaat. So um, essentially it's basically, when somebody says on the dikki chaat, it means basically what I'm about to show you, which is the potato with the chickpeas, and then with all of the garnishes, and same for when you say, Smoke. So I've put a nice hearty dollop of chickpea curry in all of them. And now what I'm going to do is show you. So taking Gita's um, samosas that she had earlier, I'm going to put the potato patty on that one. I'll put the lovely uh, samosa on that one. And We'll put, here we go, a lovely another sticky on this one. So there we go. And then I'm going to add here the red dough that we made earlier. So if you remember, it was the yogurt with the carrots, uh, grated carrots, grated uh, cucumber, some red onions in there, and then some salt, black pepper, and a little bit of red chili flakes. So I'll add a little bit of that to each of them. It's already um, making me feel very hungry here guys um really wish you could have a taste the, the the aromas are lovely as well so there we go you've got your small star chart in the middle your dicky chart on the sides um and then on top of that we will add the mint sauce that we made um obviously i, I showed you this kind of one that was done earlier but 
um, it doesn't take very long to, to make. And if you haven't got the patience to make it from scratch, just simply buy it from the supermarket. They do have a uh, mint sauce varieties there that you can just simply combine with your favorite yogurt, a little bit of salt and pepper. And um, some people put a touch of um, lemon in there as well. Um, and really that that's as much as you need there. If you want it a bit spicier, we uh, as a family also add chili. As you can imagine, we seem to add chili to everything. So um, it, it's, it's a go-to go -to, um, feast um, for us. Yeah. But this, this is something we would have either on, um, you know, just before or at the end of a Christmas uh, day, um, or we'd have it maybe the day before. So in an Asian household, you always have a combination of both dinners. So you'd have the Indian version as well as the, um, as well as the um, right, um, you know, proper Christmas dinner. So parsnips, carrots, you know, your roast and, and everything else. So we're, we're really excited and we kind of get the best of both. So we'll just show you how to, yeah. you know, really do this Christmas style. Um, Rena's absolutely going for it with the herbs. Um, so I've, yeah, I've added some <laughs> beautiful, like just the mint sounds absolutely beautiful. Um, and I've also added some coriander to that. And you're going to top it with a little bit of um, chopped red uh, onion on there as well so you can see already it's starting to look like the depth of flavors it looks amazing already um and the the depth of textures as well so you've got a bit of crunch from the red onion um you've got kind of the chickpeas which are nice and soft at the bottom but again with that touch of spice and then just to make it ultra Christmassy. And um, we're going to add some of our pomegranate gems and look at, at those beautiful colours. Like, honestly, can't really ask for more, can you? That looks lovely. I can't wait to eat this. Um, and then I think I'm going a bit overboard on the pomegranate seeds there, but there you go. The Absolutely uh, beautiful kind of colours. And finally, just to add a pop of orange colour, which I wasn't going to add, to be honest, but Geese seems to like a carrot, so where should, where should I pop them? Just Should give there. it a sprinkling. A sprinkle, sprinkle, go for it. You've got a bit of a sprinkle around the sides. So, I mean, you really are getting your five a day here, guys, <laughs> as well, so. I don't know about five. You have to have 80 grams to be able to say it's one, one of your well, five a day. True, but... So two samosas would equal one of your five a day. So that's a good reason to go all out on samosas if, if you needed one. Um, obviously, the chickpeas are a great uh, protein um, enrich um, sort of ingredient. Um, also, you've got uh, lots of herbs there. Um, there's wonderful anti-inflammatory um, ingredients with the turmeric, black pepper, um, and then obviously um, loads of garlic and ginger, which are also equally gorgeous um, for, for Christmas. Now, um, I was actually going to do the same thing to this plate, but in the interests of time, um, I will um, give Tony the opportunity to, to... Sorry, I stole your thunder a little bit. No, that's fine, <laughs> don't worry, it's fine. But a very, uh, a very joint uh, sisterly effort. So <laughs> if you've got any siblings, guys, then yeah, might maybe one for you guys to do in the kitchen as yeah. well. So um, we just want to make sure that um, we wish you a really, really wonderful festive time. We're really sad that we haven't met you this year. We hope you've you know, um, well, we hope this helps you to show the kind of thing that we would create for you maybe at the shows um, when, when you meet us there. But hopefully you can find that you can do that yourselves um, for yourselves at home. And um, yeah, yeah, we miss you. Um, we really look forward to seeing you next shows. year. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to do it again physically at the shows. And, yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully meet all of you. There. Um, and keep those messages coming. It's been lovely keeping in touch with you over the period. We absolutely appreciate the audience um, that you are. And, you know, we've definitely been touched by all of our messages. So thank you very much for those. And uh, we look forward to, you know, keeping in touch with you. Um, look out for our changes around our new website um, because we will share more and more recipes it's something we haven't been great at in the past let's be honest um, but we are wanting to try and do a bit more of that for you in the new year um, and also celebrate some of the ingredients and the reasons why the properties of those are fantastic for health um, and nourishment as well as completely um, free from compromised flavor um, so yeah keep keep watching out plenty of things to try and get these products to you and help you to be really um, aware of how to make uh, make sure that you're not missing out yeah. um, certainly and, green sister style yeah and just to add you know if you do want to make it super quick you can get the the chickpea curry 
um, online on our website um, and obviously the samosas you can purchase as well so really e kind of easy for you to throw together um, but yeah also you, you could make it yourself but just, just to mention that for a super quick quick Christmas um, bite. Well that was absolutely uh, amazing and so mouth-watering that um, uh, I, I really, really wish I was right there now to uh, help demolish that with you. It looks delicious. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so Gita and Rina, uh, Green Sisters, uh, obviously regular um, parts of our live shows free from, but bringing all of that same passion and energy here to our virtual uh, festival. This is the end of the last day. Uh, sorry, end of the first day. What am I saying? The last day is tomorrow, two-day festival. And I want to say a big thank you to everybody who's taken part today. We're going to have a little bit of music, and then I'm going to come back and give you the final thanks after that. Uh, we've got a little bit of music from a great artist called Josh Gleaves. Um, and then I will be back after Josh to say a few words before we completely finish. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Gita and Rina. I hope to see you soon. And uh, thank you, everybody else. And let's go over and, and listen to some Josh Gleaves now. Well, Josh, here he is. Hey guys, my name's Josh Cleaves. I'm a 19 year old singer songwriter from London. And I play you a few tunes, starting with one of my favourite Christmas songs called Fairy Town New York by The Pokes. <laughs> Go. 
Chains by the Pogues called Fairy Town, New York. There we go, Josh Gleaves there, and uh, giving us a little Christmas cheer. So we want to say a big thank you to everybody for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and found it as inspirational and uh, mouth-watering most of the time. Um, if you missed some of the talks today, don't worry, uh, because they're all recorded and we will be sharing them uh, online with you over the next few days uh, through the website. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow, of course, with the first demo at 11 a.m. with Christine Bailey. Uh, she will be presenting gluten-free and dairy-free Christmas pudding and gingerbread cookies. It just gets better, doesn't it? In the meantime, make sure you visit the Free From Festival Marketplace to browse and shop amazing quality and free from products made by UK-based small businesses at a discounted event price over this weekend. So don't miss out. The special offers and Christmas discounts end tomorrow night at midnight. So this is the weekend to do it. Anyway, I want to say a big thanks also to uh, the team behind the scenes, Margarita and the gang, uh, for doing such an amazing job putting this together. My name is Tony Moore, and I will be back with you tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. In the meantime, have a great Saturday night, and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>